All right, so I'm here with Aaron. Aaron, how old are you? Uh, 30 years old. And are you originally from Arizona? Yeah, I was born in Yuma. In Yuma? Arizona. Mm hmm Are you homeless right now? Yeah. How long have you been homeless? Uh, almost a year, I'm gonna a say. Year? Yeah. And how did you end up homeless? Um, drugs. Straight up drugs. That leads to every other thing, kind of controls all of it. And what kind of substances do you use? Uh, I'm sober, it's been two months, but it was a fentanyl and heroin at first, and then the fentanyl and meth and weed, unfortunately, but yeah. So you were on the blues, how long were you on the blues? I'd say 10 years. And out of all those substances that you mentioned, which one was, was the worst one? The fentanyl, the blues. The blues. Um, come to find out, my my heroin um, was cut with fentanyl. So I thought I was saving myself getting on these blues. And come to find out, it still had the same thing in it. That's why it was easy for me to do that. So I had to go to um, this um, rehab. It took a month and a half to get it out of my system. I was having withdrawal seizures, like nonstop by having to go to the hospital to be checked because it, my body didn't know what to do. I've done it for so long. It was, it's the devil. Like really, I feel like it took over my body. I, I'm unlucky that I am where I'm at up here. I'll tell you that because that's the only thing saving me right now. It's hard being out here, not on anything though. It's so depressing. So, sorry, school. Honestly, like um, I was a good kid and try to be cool. So it was really heroin what started. Um, the pills, I thought you were supposed to swallow those. That's what I thought pills were for, for a while. Until I realized people were smoking them. And then I'm like, hmm, and this heroin is killing me. Like, I've been through so much because of heroin. Like, I've died a few times from smoking, just smoking heroin. And I thought it was a good idea to switch, you know? Yeah. And then it was just, just worse, actually. So, yeah. So how many times have you overdosed before? Um, on the fentanyl and hair, like the heroin and blues, I'm gonna say like four or five times, my heart stops. My body don't like it at all. And it's scary because those pills, that was when I had the heroin. I would shoot, my heart would, my body just, because that was because of fentanyl in it. I didn't know this at the time. When I went to the blues, it was uh, overdosing. Same thing though. Like it's, I literally feel like it's the devil. Like, and I'm not, I am religious, I'm not gonna lie to you, but it's, it's evil. Like it takes over you, like it makes you, it's the worst thing, to tell you the truth. And how did you manage to survive the whole deed? Um, the ambulance, and them giving a crap about me, not looking at me like a little druggie, taking the time and helping me, honestly. I'm lucky they're like that. Not all are either though. Same as like police, I love police, but some aren't doing their job. They have like a pride issue, you know? So it kind of contradicts the whole thing, but we kind of should get treated a certain way doing something like that. So it's kind of, it's hard to argue <laughs> that one. I'm lucky I know what I know though. Do you have any family members out here in Arizona still? Um, yeah, they don't talk to me anymore you because have your of the drugs. Out here? My mom just died. I had my dad, but he's still mourning, so I'll go with that one. But I've chose the drug, and that's a big deal in my family. Like, it's uh, embarrassing, you know. And, and they know about your situation right now. Yep, they're kind of watching what I do. So at least I have my brother kind of checking on me on the Facebook, but my dad won't talk to me, no one. 
and it's hard. <laughs> but it makes me want to do it more. I'm uh, lucky I get opposite <laughs> effects on stuff. I did that in basketball too. <laughs> when someone doubted me, I do, I do better. <laughs> so I'm gonna just, you gotta want it to get off of it and it's sad and it just grabs you. I literally thought my whole life changed because of this. I didn't, I'm not even me. Like when I got sober off this uh, fentanyl, it took a month and a half. I was having thoughts that I didn't even know. Like I didn't know I was different until I got sober and I was even thinking different. I was like that lost. Like that's why I say the devil because it takes over you. It's and there's some people that will do anything for it. Like it's scary. You can't. You don't know who to trust. And I wasn't raised like that, you know? It's sad. So what do you do to survive out here in the streets? Um, I walk because I'm scared to sit down because I'll get in trouble or I just literally learned to walk and sleep. That was some weird one. <laughs> but yeah, I literally nonstop walk. Um, I've been looking for jobs. I have a job interview at Denny's. So that's cool, but it's hard to keep up with how I look and stuff. I have to like act like I'm have a home and stuff. So I can do it though. I believe I can. You have to, it's hard. I'm lucky. So if I am having issues, I feel bad. Hi, you ready to order? So how dangerous is it being out here? Sorry? Being homeless out here as a woman. Oh my God. I have a taser. I had to go get a taser. There's a men that are boys, they act like little kids, harass you, won't leave you alone, don't listen to anything you say. Like I get bothered daily. I even dress not like I am right now. I dress like a bags over, like I don't try to look pretty. It's scary. Um, they will, they'll still keep bothering me. I had to get a taser. I had um, a friend of mine, I thought, I didn't really know him, but I would talk to him sometimes, and he would let me inside, and I was cleaning, and he was gonna pay me, and I took a nap, and woke up to him touching me. And I woke up like, and I got scared and just left. Like I, and I'm scared, I'm not gonna lie to you. When I see guys, I will go run to them, just so I can walk by them. It's scary, but, it's dangerous as fuck. I feel bad for the girls. Even the young ones that are trying to be a certain way that they have no idea what that can take. Like that can kill you. It's, I've seen it, you know? Sorry. It's, in, in, it's intense. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> hey, I made it right. <laughs> I'm still going. <laughs> have you ever had to use your taser? Uh, yeah, uh, a few times, actually. And and I I give people a chance and I keep trying. Okay, I've taken like 90 anger management classes. So I'm a little, <laughs> I have four brothers that kicked my butt. I played sports, so I can go, but I don't like to fight. You know, when I go through that, it taught me, let them hit you, get it out, maybe they'll feel better. Then we can talk. Like, I'm like, that's where I'm at right now. It took a long time to get like that. So it's very hard, even if someone's coming at me to, but I get so scared. It, I've never been scared in my life. And it's sad over people have no idea what's going on. They just what's, look at you. What's one of the most important things you've learned being out here homeless? Um, mind your own, straight up, and do what's right. Even if you have nothing to do with it, help. You'd be surprised that there is good people out there. And when they see that, they want to help you. And some don't. But you know better and keep going and it will get to you. I believe in karma. I am attacked by the bad kind, but I think I'm Irish, so that's why. So there's supposed to be good in there somewhere, <laughs> eventually. <laughs> but yeah, it's, you gotta really love yourself to get through this. And it's hard because you get lost in the drugs and some never get out. 
I've seen a lot of people pass away. Okay, advice to the younger generation. If they're thinking about doing blues, what kind of advice would you give them? Um, go run outside naked and run around screaming before you do that. And I'll pay you and give you the pill. <laughs> if you can do that, no problem. Every time, you're good. It's the stupidest thing in the world. Just like that, doing that, it's just as stupid. Uh, it's hard because no one's going to listen to anything I say. It's, that's why I call it the devil. I know from experience. You just love yourself. You don't have to listen. Just learn to love yourself and you can get through it. All right, and if one of your loved ones gets to see this interview, what would you like to tell them? I love you. Thank you for loving me <laughs> and for giving me. I made a lot of mistakes. Thank you. <laughs> that made me feel good. <laughs> Are you okay with me using this on my YouTube channel? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. <laughs> no I problem. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. In case somebody thank wants to reach out to you for a job offer, any donations, words of encouragement, where where can they reach you at? Do you have any social media? Yeah, um, my Facebook. It's a uh, Aaron Sue Drain. E-R-I-N-N -N space S-U-E space D-R-A-N-E and it's um it, it's my face <laughs> you'll know it's me <laughs> I have like three because I had a brain injury and I had short term for a minute so I kept forgetting passwords but I know all of them so I okay. go on all of them <laughs> all right Aaron thank you thank you mm -hmm.